Hey guys, welcome back to Control System Laboratories. I'm working on my big flashy entrance here, so hopefully I can grab your guys' attention right off the bat. And, well, now that I have you, in this video I want to show you guys a really simple feedback control system for a robotic car, like this one. And in doing so, I want to show you sort of the differences between commanding open loop versus commanding closed loop, and how closed loop control can help you meet your design goals for your system even in an environment that's changing due to uh, disturbances or just uncertainties in the environment itself. Now before we get started, let me really quickly show you the components that make up this robotic car. So this is the robotic car that I'm going to use as my test platform. It's mostly just a stock Zumo robot from Pololu.com. I got the kit rather than the fully assembled vehicle because I wanted to practice my soldering. But if you're not into that, you can always just get the fully assembled car. Now with the kit, you get to pick your own micro metal gear motors. And I chose two of the 50 to 1 gear ratio high powered motors for my project. These, these two motors are the ones that, that drive the front uh, wheel for each of the left and right side. Now, the Zumo Shield, which is this big black uh, printed circuit board, can be modified to interface with various versions of the Arduino microcontroller. I set mine up to work with the Uno, uh, because that's the one I have, and the instructions tell you how to do this, but basically it's just soldering these header pins in the right pattern so that it matches the Arduino. Now, the Zumo Shield has a few sensors on it that you have access to. However, I wanted to use an external sensor because I think it makes more sense for this educational video if you can actually see the sensor that I'm using. And that's why I have these wires protruding from the front here. They allow me to connect to this I2C external bus component. Now I2C stands for Enter Integrated Circuit, and it's a way to send information between two different ICs, much like a telephone wire between a sensor and a microcontroller. Now if you don't know what any of this means or how to write code to read an I2C device, don't worry about it. There's a few libraries online for the Arduino that do all that work for you. And I'll get to that in a second. Now as far as my Arduino, this is unmodified. It's just an Arduino Uno, and I happen to stick this breadboard on the back using the adhesive that comes with it so that I have a place to attach my external sensor. And if I put this all back together, you can see what the final product looks like. And again, I can plug in my I2C bus into the breadboard, and then I can plug my I2C component into the breadboard also so that everything can now read each other. Although for this first example, I want to control the car open loop. So I'm going to remove the sensor for now and uh, let's go set up the test. Now I want to have the car drive from this side of the platform over to this side and make it to this flag. Now it's just a straight line, and I've drawn the straight line in black here on the platform so you can see it a little bit easier. But the trick is I want to command this open loop, which means I need to be able to predict how to send commands to the car in order to accomplish this. Now luckily it's just a straight line, so that makes it pretty easy. All I have to do is send the exact same command to both wheels, and if I built the car correctly, they'll both spin at the exact same rate, and the car will just drive in a straight line across the platform. So let's go write the code for that and test it out. Now, if you're not too familiar with writing embedded code, don't worry, neither am I. But luckily, you can download the Zumo libraries for the Arduino directly from the Pololu website. You can either just do a search for the Zumo robot kit, or you can click through the links to get to it. But once you're there, click on the Resources tab to find out all of the different files that you can download. And under the Zumo Shield Libraries link, you're going to find the files that we're looking for. And there's libraries here to drive the buzzer, the motors, the sensors. You can download all of them if you want, but we're only going to be using the Zumo Motors Library for this example. To download them all, just click the Zip button up at the very top. And once you download them, put all of the files into the Library folder for the Arduino so that you have access to these libraries when you open up the Arduino application. Here I'm opening up the Zumo Motor example. This code will show you how to access the functions in the Zumo Motors library so you can control the car. It turns on an LED when driving the car forward and then turns it off when driving backwards so you can see if you accidentally wired the motors wrong. I didn't, so I'm going to remove this LED code for our example to make it a little bit simpler. However, I don't want the car driving as soon as I turn it on, so I'm going to add a 5 second delay here at the beginning. 
Now down here, the code cycles through running each wheel forward and backwards to test that they're working. Again, I don't need this code. I only started from this so I could see the syntax for commanding the wheels. Also, I'm just going to set both the right and left motor speeds to 100 counts. Since the max is 400 counts, this should drive the car in a straight line at about a quarter of its max speed. So this code will run the setup once upon initialization, which is just going to wait 5 seconds. Then it's going to run the loop function continuously until you remove power. Let's compile this onto the car and go test it out. So I'll put the car down here on the test platform, and it's got the 5 second delay, so I turn it on, and we'll watch it go. And pretty much as expected, it drives in a straight line uh, right towards the flat. But what if I try that again, but this time add a little bit of disturbance into the system? Let's see how it works then. All right, I'll set this car up one more time on the end here. And this time I'm going to rotate the platform while it's driving. And as you can see, it's not going to make it to the flat at all. In fact, it's just going to follow the rotating platform. But that's okay, if we know ahead of time how the platform rotates and at what speed it rotates, we can still command this open loop. We just need to make a few modifications to the code first. Now we want the car to turn to the right, so in order to do that we'll just increase the left wheel speed a little bit and decrease the right wheel speed a little bit. So let's compile this code and put it onto the Arduino and go test it out again. Okay, now that we have our code uploaded onto our car, let's try this one more time. This time we'll add disturbances to the system. As you can see, the car is rotating off of the black line, and it's still driving right towards the flat. So as long as the disturbance is exactly what we predict, open loop commanding still works just fine. But I think you can see the problem here. If we try that one more time, and this time we don't add a disturbance, or we rotate in the wrong direction, you'll see that the car doesn't go anywhere near the flag. And this is the main drawback of open loop commanding. If you don't know your, your system perfectly, or it's not robust to all of these different uh, variations of the system, or to disturbances to the system, then open loop commanding isn't going to work. You're going to have to add a sensor to the system and command a closed loop. So let's go try that. Okay, the sensor that I have is called the minimu-9 and it's from Pololu, and it's called an IMU, which stands for Inertial Measurement Unit, because it houses a 3-axis accelerometer, a 3-axis magnetometer, and a 3-axis rate gyro. And it interfaces with an I2C bus, just like we want. However, for this example, we're not going to use all of the sensor readings. I only want to use the gyro. We could have also chosen the magnetometer reading, or both of them in conjunction for our example, but I'm just going to stick with the gyro to make things simple. Now, I'll talk about how I set up the control system in detail in a future video, but first let me give you the big picture of what's happening so that you have an idea of how I did it. Now, the first thing is that I still want the car to drive forward at about the same rate, so I'll still command each wheel to run at 100 counts. And this is just an open loop command to both wheels since it's not based on the actual state of the vehicle. But in addition to this, I want to drive the angular velocity of the car to zero. So that's my reference command, zero omega. Or in other words, I don't want it to rotate in inertial space. That way when I rotate the platform, the car will try to stay driving forwards towards the flag. So my reference is zero radians per second. I'll compare that against the measured angular velocity from the sensor to generate my error term. The error term then goes through a controller, which in this case is a proportional controller, or just a simple gain. And the output of the controller then is the delta wheel command. And I'm going to add that delta wheel command to the right wheel and subtract it from the left wheel to generate our turning moment on the vehicle. Now one thing to note at this point, that as long as the sensor measures no angular velocity, then the error term is going to be zero, and each of the motors are just going to get their original 100 counts each. Now the left and right motor commands go into our plant, which is just our Zumo robot, and then the plant generates an angular velocity for the vehicle. And of course our rate gyro is going to sense that angular velocity of the vehicle and we'll feed that back into our controller. But one last thing, the sensor might be a bit noisy, so I wanted to add a simple filter to the output before it gets over to the comparator. Now I'm going to talk more about filtering in future videos as well, so don't dwell on that too much right now. 
So this is the simplified block diagram of the control system. So let's go over and see how we'd write the code for this. Now the first thing that the code does is declare the variables that we're going to use later on, as well as set all of the include files. Now the first bit of code inside the setup function just sets up reading the gyro. And this is just stock code that I got from the gyro example off the website. Again, also I have this delay 5000, which just waits five seconds before commanding. Inside the loop function, we just read the gyro to get the angular rate of the vehicle. Then we build a five frame averager filter, which just averages the last five readings and puts it into variable g. So now our left motor speed velocity is just 100 minus g divided by 35, which is g times the gain of our controller. And for the right speed, it's 100 plus g divided by 35. This difference is going to give us the turning that we need in order to respond to the angular velocity of the vehicle. And lastly, I put a delay of 50 milliseconds here because I want this loop to run at 20 hertz. So let's go back to the test now and see how this works out. All right, let's try our closed loop control system in action now. I'll set it up. And just like I did before, I'm not going to add any rotation to the platform. And you'll see that the that the vehicle is still going to just drive straight down the black line right towards our flag, exactly like it did in the open loop case. But now we have closed loop control. Let me show you kind of what's going on here. If I don't rotate the car at all, both wheels are going to rotate at the exact same rate. But as I rotate one way versus the other, you'll see one wheel stops and the other continues. So, let's try this one more time. And this time I'm going to add some disturbance to the system and see how our closed loop controller can handle that. If I add some rotation, you can see that it's going off the black line and driving, well, more or less towards the flag. There's probably a little, uh, uh, a little more tuning that I can do with the control system to make it a little bit better. If we watch that very same thing, though, from above, it's a bit easier to tell what's going on. So, as you can see, our control system does a pretty good job of rejecting disturbances and still being able to maintain its goal, which is to get to the flag here at the end. Uh, of course, we can always improve on this control system. We can make it faster, a little bit more accurate, um, work in, in a, a, a wider variety of environments. And we're going to do that exact thing over the next few videos. I'll keep this car and we'll just kind of uh, improve upon this and, and add more features to it and I'll walk you guys through step by step the process that I take for designing a control system like this. So I hope you stick around for it. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of these future videos. And as always, uh, thanks for watching. Oh. Oh. That can't be good. It's a bit unstable. <laughs>